Today we're back on the power supply. We got most of the the external hardware set up and the, the meters put in. So that's all done. And this is version 3, I believe. Um, or version 4. Well, it doesn't matter. The um, previous version's on the bench right now. So we're getting ready to do the next step. We're kind of working our way backwards because uh, that's that's a little bit easier. So now that we have our terminals installed, we got our holes drilled for our board. And this board is basic. This is just a EMI suppressor board that suppresses EMI that comes back from the outside world into the power supply. So this helps with abating RF noise going back into the power supply. And, and that's kind of important because when the RF goes back into the power supply, the sense lines connect directly to these points because you're going to sense right at the terminals. And so the sense and V power, this is actually, this is the power board, will both need EMI filters because the sense lines go right back into the regulating control element of the power supply. And the power side is going to help reduce the, um, the disturbance to the pass regulator. So that's what we're doing here. We just want to make sure that we have a, a low impedance um, DC and AC to the load. Of course, it'll only be DC, but we're going to try and short out all the nasty AC nonsense with some filter elements. And yeah, these are probably too small, but um, we're going to we're going to test it. Actually, we're going to make a uh, current transformer and we're going to backfeed noise into the supply and see if we have good enough immunity. If we don't then we'll we'll modify this. So this is just a first pass. You can you can laugh at it. It's okay. It doesn't matter. This is all first pass stuff. So I got some tin plate and I tin plated this so it's solderable. This stuff is very concentrated. It's also very expensive. It's like $70 for that bottle. So this is not this is not a requirement, but it just makes soldering it a lot easier. And the filter is a choke, some capacitors. We have a, a diode for keeping the um, the voltage uh, or the yeah, when the power supply cuts off, it's going to, is it cut off? I don't remember. Anyway, we have a diode on the output to protect the uh, voltage reversal. I don't care what the exacts are. And we got some resistors to bleed off the uh, stored charge when... Uh, when we turn the power supply down. Because if you turn it up to 30 volts, if you turn it up to 30 volts, and then you turn it back to zero, and there's no load, it's not gonna discharge unless there's something there to get it to discharge. So we have uh, one kilo ohm, five watt, one kilo ohm. These are five watt. I can't tell. This should be 5 watt. 1 kilo and 5 watt resistors. Um, so that'll that'll bleed off the charge to the board. So we're going to do that and we're going to stuff it and then we'll put the cap on and um, 
the way this inductor is wound is that you can see it you know you start on one side and you end up on the other side so if we put plus on this side of the board it's going to come out here and minus will come out on this side so we've got to be careful about our polarity and and um, all that so we'll figure that out and then when we have the board in there right we'll make sure that that one's negative and that one's positive so we got to make sure that our capacitor is oriented the correct way so he's just going to bolt onto the board like that and ordinarily you would use some RTV on this guy to keep it from moving but we might reuse him I don't know if we're going to reuse the board or not because this is all um, this is all semi-final prototyping but that's that's not really important what is important is that we make some progress on this thing because it's been waiting for a long time so in keeping with working our way backwards backward upstream the next major element will be the pass regulator and this is a pass regulator so there's a bunch of power transistors in here You've got the driver, it acts like a Darlington to these guys. So these are the power devices. Well, you can see how much power this can switch. This survived 50 amps, so which is pretty remarkable. So you can see, you know, these traces aren't that big but it survived 50 amps with no problem none of the transistors are were, were shot either which was remarkable so they're they're pretty hefty and you can see how we're all soldered in here to spread the load so we've got more of these guys that we're going to solder fill so that they hold up that uh, hold up under that kind of load and um, this board we didn't know what we were rated for but this board we're only going to rate for about 35 amps maybe 40 so i'm not going to worry about any of that stuff so we'll make a a pass regulator similar to this in the future but it, it's got to be more compact though because see we're running out of you know enough space in here and we still have to fit this thing in there somehow and then we have to fit the control boards in here in a, in a stack so it's gonna run out of room pretty fast and uh, this is this is all passive we'll probably end up with five or six pass transistors with one driver and then it'll have active cooling which is going to improve our our thermal resistance or our, our thermal conductivity well whatever don't care all right so we're going to get to stuffing the board and then mounting it <laughs> 